Hey guys, this is the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. I'm going to test out this format because I am very limited on time these days. And today I wanted to share with you as a technologist some things that I'm doing that are counterintuitive as a technologist in 2024. I have been running without a data plan on my smartphone for, geez, I think it's approaching two months. And it has changed my habits and how I treat my compute devices and I have found that you do not ever need to connect anything to the internet and have a very powerful system over radio. And I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. I'll go on more in depth in a future video. But basically this morning, I set about to set up from scratch this Panasonic FZM1 Mark II with the iKey keyboard. And I have two USB drives here. Uh, the first one is a... Uh, Ventoy drive that has multiple ISO copies, including Windows 10 and a number of Linux distributions. So this computer was completely reinstalled offline with this guy. Number two, I've got about 16 gigs, maybe more actually, of offline material, including all of the software backups that I need. And I was able to reinstall all of the applications on this guy. I'm also keeping a series of what is probably going to turn into the Tech Prepper off grid, offline uh, field manual for digital comms and radio, and it's growing pretty heavily. So it may be a book that comes out uh, sometime next year. But right now I'm just collecting all of my notes. So, anyways, I went ahead and set up uh, Windows 10 and started with WinLink Express so that I could send out some. Uh, email and I'm testing that with the DigiRig Lite. So for those of you who have not seen my other videos with the DigiRig Lite, this thing's a game changer. Um, I wish I could buy three more. In fact, I probably should do that before I drop this video. But it's a nice single interface to bridge my radio or multiple radios, you'll see here in a second, with my computer. So uh, long story short, I've got WinLink Express here. Uh, I'm not really a Windows guy, but some of the cool things that I did here this morning is that I actually went ahead and uh, really made this look more like my Windows 7 or Windows XP days. And I installed a bunch of utilities I'll talk about later that one, fully disabled Windows Update, and two, turn the desktop to have a nice classic desktop experience. So no clutter, and the only applications right now that I'm using are WinLink Express, uh, quick access to the device manager, sound modem, and then I actually even went with Vara FM. Uh, also got the packet stuff working. So anyways, this is the cool thing that I want to show you about the DigiRig Lite. Is right now I've got uh, WinLink ready to go. Uh, I could do like a packet session to my station over there. Let's go ahead and do that real quick actually. Let's go ahead and... And this is going to be my shakiest video ever. So we're going to go ahead and do a connection. And let's go ahead and start... And we should be connecting there. You'll see that the PTT should go on and off. And we are connected to my gateway that is basically now permanently running on a dock that I bought for like 10 bucks a couple years ago. So that's pretty much it. It connected. I have no email. The nice thing about... Uh, actually, we're going to disconnect this and I'll show you how cool it is to transition from being connected to an HT which has limited power, hence why I'm going to the RMS gateway, to something that's gonna take me 40 miles north. So before we do that, let's go ahead and we're going to unplug this guy. So we just have the DigiRig light here. And a couple things to note here, uh, when I'm working with the, like the FT60, I do like to actually have, I should have locked it actually, um, I will typically lock the keypad so I don't accidentally change the frequency. I've got the volume set about the 1230 position here and it's good for decode. But you'll also notice the rubber band here and that's because the FT60s are notorious for having the cable back out and uh, submit a dead carrier and trigger that PTT. So the broccoli bands actually work pretty good. Yeah, it's ghetto and uh, this is why the VX6 is nice because it has the captive threaded connectors. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and Disable this so we get some audio. You can see there it actually just keyed up. All right, so let's go transition over here. And then, like I said, this is the uh, 2980. Uh, this is running 24 hours a day. I've got the display back down, uh, low power right now. 
Uh, it's actually going to fail over to a 20 amp hour battery using the Epic PowerGate. Uh, I already had the investment in my uh, power supply here and then the rig runner. So I just got to make some custom cables, uh, create one fuse cable. So this whole system will actually fall back to a 20 amp hour battery uh, with solar if there's an outage. But the cool thing about the DigiRig here is that let's say right now it's running my RMS gateway. I'm running the old DigiRig here, the, the mobile. All I have to do is disconnect this cable from the old DigiRig. You can't see this. And now I'm plugged in to this radio that will do 85 watts. And guys, this is raw, but I just want to show you all of this cool stuff here. So we're going to do 85 watts now. I didn't have to do anything to the Windows machine. And then let me go ahead here and we'll close our packet session. And we're going to switch the session here over to Vara FM. And Vara is blazing fast. You might see some of this um, coming on the channel. So we're going to do Vara FM radio only so the goal is to hit a station that is shoot about 52 miles north of me um, running 85 watts so i am going to buy a license for vara i just got to figure out how to do that without um oh i got to open this session here <coughs> without the internet so <clears throat> that's the thing this thing has never been connected to the internet it is not even to my local wi-fi network and uh, the reason why i kicked off this video is because i was looking for an rms gateway to connect to and just before you guys or i started this recording this list of all of the stations in my area uh i was looking for this guy actually you can actually see it's 64 kilometers out so not as far as i said but still pretty far i actually did this update via radio and it basically, uh, I think, downloaded over Vara a 22 kilobyte file, which is large by radio standards, and populated this. So fully, fully air-gapped. I mean, it's got whatever version of Windows 10 I had when I made the, the image to install it. So um, actually, let's go ahead and do that one more time. We're going to click Update via Radio. And then what it does, it'll post uh, an outbox request to a special... Uh, site called inquiry so let's close this yeah guys no editing um, all right if we go back over to our outbox we're basically going to send out this request so we're gonna actually have to do two connections I'm not gonna bother you guys with the second connection but it will in fact within the software fully request that and update that list <clears throat> at first I thought I was gonna have to do like a sneaker net to uh, copy maybe off of this machine which is connected to the internet uh, the RMS list file so either way let's go ahead and connect so we're gonna start you know, let's just use our finger here a valid call sign must be specified. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I actually remembered it. So it, I think it's Kilo 8 YCA-8. In fact, guys, this is the other reason why you want to take notes. I am challenging myself to uh, do everything. Yeah, YC8. YCA8. Okay, yeah, I'm challenging myself to do everything offline without internet, and this is going to be something I'm working on for several more months. Why don't you want to connect here? Oh, all right. Wow. Wow. This is why editing is nice, but oh well, you guys get the point. We are going to Y7 YCA. Now let's go ahead and start. And you can hear how what Vara sounds like on that radio. So we're connected to the uh, Mount Union gateway. 
and uh, basically I sent out a request for for that guy or for the RMS list rather so yeah uh, for those of you guys wondering uh, VARA works great with the DigiRig Lite. Um, if you guys do like what I do, consider getting the DigiRig Lite using the link I have in the video description. Uh, I do get a little bit of a kickback, but it does not cost you anything. and just kind of keeps the uh, the trains running. Um, all right, guys. So, yeah, that's really what I wanted to show you was a couple things here. Uh, think about your off-grid computing needs. I'm going to walk you through everything I did, all my notes, kind of how my new kit is laid out, my entire combo kit is actually now in here for digital comms. It's got like extra batteries. It's got a method to recharge via multiple different means. Uh, I've got all of the backup USBs, all of the little cables, the radio, so not bad. And then I've got this kind of growing uh, field manual that will be a, a book at some point. But uh, yeah, thinking about being off grid and fully offline and what you need uh, in 2024 is probably something most people are not doing. But uh, I think it probably has a lot of value. And, you know, this isn't the only prep, right? There's personal security. There's building community. There's water uh, catchment and purification. There is food storage. There's gardening. There's uh, dealing with processing uh, chickens. All of that good stuff is part of this. But for those of you that do rely a little bit too much on your phone, try going back into a time machine going back 30 years ago uh, yeah, 30 years. Yeah, mid-90s would put you into the area of doing basically very simple uh, modem-based uh, work on the kind of the early consumer internet days over radio. But anyways, this is just something that I thought might be fun just to kind of do a quick point and shoot and walk you through kind of these experiments. And the reason why I'm looking at Vara FM after I get the license is that it's a lot faster and more robust and I want to do some encryption and I want to basically take that and run it on my business frequencies out here and start to get my local group and I out here transiting uh, encrypted radio using peer-to-peer -peer Winlink using a mode like VARA FM. If you guys want to see more on Windows, which is not really my thing, I'm happy to do it. Let me know down below. If you guys want to see more work on, um, I guess, general preps, I don't know, let me know what you guys want me to talk about. I'm probably not going to do a video on everything, but I've got a lot of these wacky ideas. All right, it's uh, getting out of control here, guys. Let's go ahead and call this one.